Good morning. Welcome to Kitsap Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Please stand as you are willing and able to join in singing our call to worship, Morning Has Broken, hymn number 38 in our gray hymnal. Once again, welcome to Kitsap Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. We are so glad to be get together in this loving and vibrant community. Whoever you are and wherever you come from, for this hour, we here are one gathered congregation and all are welcome. My name is Genevieve Emmett and in the spirit of KUF's mission as part of our ever-growing welcome, I offer this self-description. I am a 44-year-old woman, often mistaken for younger. <laughs> <laughs> I am wearing a sage green dress with a muted flower print. My curly, long hair has browned with age. And are those gray highlights hiding in my blonde? Maybe, maybe. The light through our many windows has, is gray, and the mossy trees behind us drip, drip, drip with the filtered rain. Our worship leaders this morning are our minister, Reverend Crystal Zerfoss, and our director of religious exploration, Melinda Hughes. I'd like to welcome any visitors if you are here in person, we look forward to welcoming you outside after the service. Children will be staying in with us for this intergenerational service. After the service, they are invited to gather in front of the building for an Easter egg hunt. I, have invited, or I invite you to follow along in your order of service. For those of you attending virtually, all the links of this service, including the order of service, are on our website and in this morning's worship service email. If you are here in the sanctuary this morning, please silence any cell phones or technological devices. 
In keeping with our covenant of care and concern for each other, our board of directors continues to require that we wear, all wear masks over our mouths and noses while in the building, especially when we are all gathered in sanctuary for worship. Thank you for honoring that covenant and the board's directions. If you need a mask, the ushers can provide you with one. Just raise your hand. The announcements are available on our website, www.kuf.org, or in our weekly email newsletter, The Candle. Today is our flower ceremony. Many of you have brought flowers to share with our community. Don't worry if you find yourself without flowers. We do have extras. For those of you who have flowers in hand, I would like to ask you to hold them at this time. Hold them, look at them, smell them, touch them. This is something that grew from the earth. Today you will share this beautiful blossom with someone else in our community. I invite you to look around the room to those who are gathered here in this community. As you do, think about what it is you wish to share with these people. Think about the love, the peace, the hope, the solace, and the friendship that you offer. And now I invite you, as you hold your flower, to place your intentions for your fellow community members into that blossom while we hold a moment of silence. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the aboriginal territory of the Suquamish people. Expert fishermen, canoe builders, and basket weavers. The Suquamish live in harmony with the lands and waterways along the Washington Central Salish Sea, as they have for thousands of years. Here, the Suquamish live and protect the land and waters of their ancestors for future generations, as promised by the Point Elliott Treaty of 1855. I am Reverend Crystal Zerfoss, and I am a short, middle-aged white woman with dirty brown hair with some silver in it. I'm wearing a black robe with a blue stole with a yellow sun pattern on it for Easter. For our opening words this morning, I'd like to invite our children and anyone who is young at heart to come forward to help with our call to worship this morning. Is there anybody who would like to come forward and help me do some motions for these words? Come on up. You can just come up here and be right in front of the pulpit. Thank you. Excellent. You can stand here and just make sure you look out at everybody. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We've got some more helpers. We're going to use words from Thomas Road. And you guys are going to help me. You all are going to help me bring these to life. Excellent. There we've got some folks who are young at heart as well as young in age. Thank you. We come in a variety of colors, shapes, and sizes. Some of us grow in bunches. Helpers, can you show us what it looks like to grow in bunches? Can you act that out? <laughs> Some of us grow alone. What does that look like? Some of us are cupped inward. And some of us spread ourselves out wide. Some of us are old and dried and tougher than we appear. <laughs> some of us are still in the bud. Yeah. <laughs> some of us grow low to the ground. Oh, there you go. And some of us stretch toward the sun. Ooh, 
Woo! Some of us feel like weeds sometimes. What does a weed feel like? Yeah, they're <laughs> dancing around here. <laughs> Some of us carry seeds sometimes. Can you carry seeds in your hands, maybe? And some of us are prickly sometimes. Ouch! Some of us smell. I, really, I think that means smell good. And all of us are beautiful. Yes. What a beautiful bouquet of people we are. Come now and let us worship together. Thank you all for helping with these words. We welcome Sally Willett to come forward to light our chalice. Sally is a new member of KUF, was born in New York City, and spent some time in California, and has been in the Northwest for about 30 years. Sally is an enthusiastic knitter. Now join me in lighting our chalice. If you have your own chalice or candle at home, Please light it as we say, as I read our chalice lighting words. For each and for all, by Eric Walker Wilstrom. We light this chalice for all who are here and for all who are not. For those who have ever entered our doors and for those who may yet find this spiritual home and for those we can't even imagine yet. For each of us and for all of us, may this flame burn warm and bright. Please join me as we, in the spoken affirmation, the words will appear on your screen. We gather as a caring community, seeking life's deeper meanings. We value diversity, and affirm the worth of all living things. We strive to speak truth and love, to act for justice, to grow in spirit, and to care for the earth. We celebrate with open hearts and minds the creative power that sustains and transforms us. The words of our next hymn all Creatures of the Earth and Sky are adapted from a hymn by Francis of Assisi. Please stand as you are willing and able to join in singing hymn 203, All Creatures of the Earth and Sky. We will only sing verses 1 through 3.
Good morning, everyone. I am a 50-something white woman with faded red hair, and today I'm wearing black trim glasses and a short-sleeved teal shirt. It is the time in our service for us to collect those beautiful flowers. So will the children please help in doing that? So children, if you can walk around the room and collect everyone's flowers and then bring them forward, <clears throat> excuse me, and they are going to be placed on this table here. We're gonna create a beautiful bouquet. <laughs> Henry, over there. What a beautiful collection of flowers, beautiful bouquet. We gather as a religious community to give each one of us a place where we together can do the work of many. Together our light shines much brighter than a solitary flame. Now is in the time in our service when we share in the sacred act of giving, an expression of gratitude transformed into generosity that breathes life into our mission. As a part of our mission that inspires us to act on our beliefs, we share our weekly offering with a local nonprofit agency providing services within our larger community. Our charitable giving recipient for the month of April is South Kitsap Helpline. In a moment, our ushers will move among us with baskets to help collect the offering. Donations placed in the basket go to South Kitsap Helpline. If you would like your offering to be used for KUUF, please use one of the envelopes provided in your order of service when you came into the sanctuary. For those of us giving online, you may go to our website, KUUF.org, and select the Giving tab for PayPal and mailing information. If this is your first time at KUF, please feel free to let the basket pass you by. Your presence is your gift. Let there be an offering to strengthen and sustain our community, which is sacred so, to so many of us. Let us enjoy a gift of music from our music coordinator, Brian Kenny, as he plays In the Time of Silver Rain by Langston Hughes and George Theophilus, <laughs> I'm butchering that, I'm sorry, Walker.
silver rain. The earth puts forth new life again. Green grasses grow and flowers lift their heads and over all the plain the wonder spreads of life of life of life in time of sin trees put forth new leaves to sing in joy beneath the sky in time of silver rain when spring and life are new Each week we gather, we lift up the cares and concerns of our community, the joys and the sorrows we carry into this sanctuary and those we hold in our hearts. On most Sundays, our children share their joys and sorrows together in the educational building, up in the Matin building, while the rest of us share ours here in this space together. Today, we offer our hearts to one another in multi-generational compassion and love. When shared together, our joys are amplified and our sorrows lessened. Let us be together in a time of reverence. Our community member, Meg Howlett, shares her sorrow that her mother passed away on April 3rd. Meg, her brother Mike, and her mother's husband were all by her side. Cassidy Owen shares a sorrow that her grandmother is experiencing progressive Alzheimer's and had to be moved to a memory care group home. And it's been especially hard on her mother and her sister. Cassidy also shares a joy that is the look on her daughter, on her two-year-old's face, excuse me, when he followed the trail of M&Ms to his first Easter basket this morning. <laughs> That is a joy. Bonner Sams shares a joy for taking an updated CPR continuing ed class this past week to maintain his LMT licensure, 
so grateful for the AED we have here at KUF. And a joy shared from Atomic Way is that the people, Atomic is around, and, and Atomic, all create things together, lift one another up, and continue to encourage each other in their creative processes. We light one final candle for those joys and sorrows that are still too tender to share. I invite you to breathe in for what is weighing on your heart this morning. Breathe out love for all that is being held within this community. Let us be together in a time of prayer and intention. Spirit of life and of love, God of many names and of no name, vastness of the universe, we send out our intentions for healing in our world, for healing in our lives, for healing in the lives of those we know and love. We pray for our trans and non-binary siblings as they continue to be under attack by people all across our country, taking away needed medical care, creating laws that demean and criminalize their beautiful selves. We pray for all who are hindered and for whom reproductive care is taken away through oppressive laws and restrictions being passed. We pray for our children and others affected daily by our ongoing obsession in this country with guns. We pray for a change to keep people safe. We pray for peace. We pray for comfort in our grief and in our sadness. We pray for the hope and the knowledge that we will be okay as we move through goodbyes and endings as we move into newness and beginnings, as the flowers emerge from their buds and the earth gives way to new life, let that hope and the potential fill us with that deep sense of knowing we are beloved. May love surround us, dwell deep within, and guide us always. Amen. I invite you to please remain seated and join in singing Spirit of Life, hymn number 123 in the hymnal. The words will appear on the screen.
Our reading today comes from Ruth E. Gibson. When you look at a daffodil, there are lots of things you notice. What do you notice when you look at a daffodil? It's yellow? It's pretty? Green stem? It's tall? What? Pollen. Thank you. (laughs) Maybe there's some pollen in my ears. Two kinds of flowers? You mean the petals around here and this on top? Yes. Anything else you notice? Orange. Inside. Oh, yeah. The stamen. Yeah, okay. Somebody's getting closer here. Almost no one ever notices the little withered brown bit at the base of the flower. But it's really important. When the daffodils come up, the ground is still pretty hard, and there is sometimes cold and snow. So at first, the daffodils have a tough green skin protecting their blossoms. After it gets warmer, the daffodil doesn't need this protection, and it shrivels and dies. Often in our lives, just as for the daffodil, some part of us has to shrivel up and die so that some new part of us can grow and give beauty to the world. Oddly enough, though, the dead, shriveled up part of a daffodil doesn't fall away. There are two things we can learn from a daffodil to help ourselves and each other. We can be brave and wise enough when the right time comes to push out from under the tough skins of our souls that protect us from all that is hard and harsh, that can damage the more fragile parts of ourself. We can let some parts of ourselves die so that new parts of ourselves can live in beauty. We can hold on to the shriveled up dead bits especially if doing so helps us remember to honor and value all parts of ourselves, all parts of our experience. Just because we don't need that part or that way of being in the world now doesn't mean that that part has no value. It was very necessary to have that protection then, and it's, a very, good, it's very good to remember and appreciate it when you're looking at the beautiful daffodil. Please join me in a moment of reflection, followed by our post-reflection music, Rising Green by Carolyn McDade. doth rise in the roots of yon oak her sap doth run in my veins boundless my soul like the open sky where the stars forever have lain where the stars where the stars where the stars forever have lain. My hands hold the weavings of time without end. Her sap as deep as the sea, beating my heart sounds a man. 
treasures of old that of love's eternity that of love that of love that of love's eternity I feel the tides as they answer the moon rushing on a far distant sand winging my song is the wind of my breast and my love blows over the land and my love and my love and my love blows over the My foot carries days of the old into new. Our dreaming shows us the way. Wondrous our lane settles deep in the earth, rising green to bring a new day. Rising green, rising. Rising green to bring a new day. Rising green, rising green, rising green to bring a new day. Testing again. Is that better? Excellent. What I'm asking is those of you who have uh, your coloring sheets, please color your, ca your candles that you have. We're going to need those for this story. This version of the Easter story was originally written by Unitarian Universalist Minister of Religious Education, Ruth Gibson, and it's been adapted through the years just as we have adapted it here today. During Holy Week, the week before Easter, many Christian churches hold a special service called tenebrae, which means darkness in Latin. During this tenebrae service, the story of the last days of Jesus' life is read aloud, and candles are generally put out until the church is in total darkness. At the end of the service, a loud noise sounds symbolizing the closing of Jesus' tomb, and people leave in silence. Three days later on Easter Sunday, today, candlelight returns to the church. Tenebrae services remind us that Easter hope arises out of real pain, and that life's affirmations are often made in the context of difficulty and sorrow. Today, as we acknowledge the struggles we humans have trying to live together in peace, we recognize the power of love and hope to change the world for the better, 
even as we understand that life is full of both joy and sorrow. The story of Jesus is one way we can remember this. And on Easter, it is important to share about his life and ministry. Hello. <laughs> Easter is the time when Christians celebrate and remember the life and death of Jesus. Most of what we know about Jesus' life comes from four books in the Bible called the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. While all four Gospels tell some of the same stories about Jesus, there's a lot we don't know about him. We know he was important to people and that his ministry changed the world. But so much of his life is shadowed in mystery, and there are things about him that we will never know. We light our first candle for the mystery that is Jesus and for all things beyond our knowledge. One idea found in most of the stories about Jesus is that he was a very loving and caring person. It is written that he helped people who were sick to become well and strong. Throughout the Gospels, the writers tell us that Jesus sided with people who were left out or were picked on. The Gospels say that Jesus made friends with people that others disliked and that he taught his followers not only to love their friends and neighbors, but to love their enemies too. We light the second candle for Jesus' teachings to love and care for one another. Another thing that people remember about Jesus is his courage. He spoke out against laws and people whom he did not think were fair and kind. He even disobeyed some of the laws of his own religion and tried to change them. He made both friends and enemies by his teachings and actions. We light this candle for the strength and courage it takes to rise up for what you think is right. People who were inspired by Jesus became his followers. Some of them were called disciples. But even among Jesus' disciples, there was disagreement. When Jesus went to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, the Jewish holiday that celebrates the liberation and freedom of the Jewish people, one of Jesus' followers turned him over to his enemies. He was arrested and sentenced to death by crucifixion which was the cruel way the Romans put criminals to death. After he died that horrible death, Jesus' followers were so confused, sad, and scared that they didn't know what to do. We extinguish these candles for the fear and hate which causes people to do cruel things and the sad and painful things in life which can leave us feeling so confused and frightened that we can't help ourselves or the people we love. Let us take a moment in silence to remember all of those hurt by ignorance, hatred, and fear.
The story of Jesus does not end with his death, of course. Many Christians believe that on the third day after Jesus died, what we call Easter Sunday, one of his followers, Mary Magdalene, went to his tomb and found that his body was gone. Then she saw a man who told her not to be afraid, that Jesus was still with them. Mary Magdalene told Jesus' other followers what she had seen. Later, they believed they saw Jesus again, and he told them to carry on his message of love by doing what he had done in his life, caring for other people and rising up against injustice. The early Christians carried on his work so it stayed alive and did not die with him. This is one way of understanding the resurrection that is celebrated in Christian churches on Easter Sunday. When people really believe in something, it gives them hope and courage. When we are sad and confused, sharing our memories and doing things that show our love and care for each other can help us feel better. Let us relight these candles to remind us that love is always stronger than hate. Everyone on this side, if you have your candles colored, will you lift that up so we have our candle lighting over here? There we go. Keep them up, please. Hope is always stronger than despair. Everyone in this section, hold your candles high. And life is always stronger than death. Everyone who is left over here on this side, please hold up your candles. The light shineth brightly. Alleluia. This is the Easter message. Blessed be and amen. Thank you. You may put your candles down. Today, we hold our annual flower ceremony. The flower ceremony is a tradition that began a hundred years ago in June 1923. This June is the hundredth anniversary. It began in what is now known as the Czech Republic. The Reverend Norbert Topic and his wife, Reverend Maya Oktovec Topic, created this ritual in their Unitarian church in Prague. It is now the most widely celebrated ritual in Unitarian Universalist congregations. I'd like to share a little history with you. A former Catholic turned Baptist minister and a political dissident who fled to the U.S. during World War I, Norbert was tried for heresy in a Baptist tribunal, perhaps more than once, before discovering Unitarianism. We have a lot of heretics in our history. <laughs> he and Maya found their theological home in the East Orange Unitarian Church in New Jersey. They said they had discovered a place with not only clear heads, but warm hearts. The following year, they returned to Prague with their newfound Unitarianism. It's pretty amazing. They hadn't been Unitarians for very long when in February 1922, with support from the American Unitarian Association, Norbert and Maya organized the Prague Congregation of Liberal Religious Fellowship. In just 20 years, they built a vigorous nationwide movement with more than 8,000 Unitarians in Czechoslovakia and made Unitarianism a state-recognized church. The Prague Church alone had 3,200 members. Yeah, Norbert had the goal to create a form of communion that was relevant to his people and their experience. He opted to bring together two foundational principles of his ministry. Love for God's creation and what it offers the spirit and the power of community. 
He asked that everyone bring a flower, and these were collected at the door by the children of the congregation. These flowers were then brought ceremoniously to the altar, where they were blessed. Then, in a special ritual, each member of the congregation was invited to solemnly approach the altar and take a flower other than the one they had themselves brought. It was in this way, by seeing the bright and beautiful arrangement made by the collecting of the flowers and the gift of beauty in receiving a flower, that the power of community could be celebrated. Community is created by the gifts each person brings to the table, and we are each sustained by what we receive from one another. In 1940, Reverend Mayak Chapik brought the flower communion ritual to the United States. While she was here, Norbert was killed in the Dachau concentration camp in 1942. Nazi court records show that they found Norbert's gospel of the inherent worth and beauty of every human person to be, quote, too dangerous to the Reich for him to be allowed to live. This year, as we share together in this flower ceremony, this uniquely Unitarian ritual, may it bring us back into loving each other's uniqueness, no matter how hard the world may try to divide us. May we be called by our traditions and faith back into the sun, into abundance, into appreciation and compassion. We celebrate both the Earth's beauty and humanity's oneness. By exchanging flowers, we show our willingness to journey together in our search for truth. Each of us has brought a flower for our bouquet, representing our unique gifts and the beauty of our diversity. May we celebrate together the strength of a faith that can be as fragile as a flower and yet withstand the darkest despair. May we share together as the loving faith community we are. Blessed be and amen. As we enter into this sacred ritual, let us join together to bless these flowers. A blessing is genuinely wishing the best for another person by seeing their individual worth and honoring them for it. We will use the words of Reverend Chapik. First, we will listen to them shared in Czech by the Reverend Dr. Peter Samoyski, who serves as the minister of the Prague Unitarian Congregation. Then we will share them together in English. Let me share with you the meditation which Norbert Fabian Čapek offered for Flower Communion. Ve jménu prozřetelnosti, která do jádra ukládá budoucnost mohutného stromu a do srdcí vkládá budoucnost zbratřeného lidstva, ve jménu toho nejvyššího, co námi hýbe, co činí matku matkou, bratra bratrem a sestru sestrou, ve jménu mistrů a vůdců božských, kteří vlastních životů nasazovali, jen aby uspíšili příchod říše lidskosti, pro dobro vlastní a prospěch svého národa obnovme své předsevzetí, že si chceme být upřímnými bratry a sestrami bez ohledu na jakékoliv přehrady, 
které odcizují člověka člověku. V tomto svatém předsevzetí síliš nás vědomí, že jsme jedna boží rodina, že jeden duch, duch lásky nás spojuje a jedna snaha po dokonalejším a radostnějším životě nás vede. Please join me in the blessing on the screens. I will read the yellow text and all of us will read the white text. In the name of the providence, which implants in the heart of the seed, the future of the flower, and which implants in our hearts that unrest which will not be quenched until people live lovingly with each other. We bless these flowers. In the name of the highest, in which we move and take our being, and in the name of the deepest, which makes parents and sibling, neighbor and friend, lover and loner, who they are, we bless these flowers. In the name of the prophets and sages who sacrificed their lives to hasten the coming of the reign of mutual respect, we bless these flowers. Let us renew our resolution sincerely to be brothers and sisters and siblings, regardless of the barriers which estrange. May these flowers be for us the sign of the glory and variety to which we aspire, knowing the whole while that we are one family, the family of spirit and nature. In this holy result, we may be strengthened by the spirit of love, that we ourselves may bloom, bloom in splendor of a joyful life, and endeavor to be ever more perfect in our days. Amen. I invite you to come forward to select a flower, choosing one that you did not bring. We will begin with this side over here. Once you have chosen your flower, please return to your seat and reflect on the beauty of its essence and of our shared love for one another. Come forward.
Would you lift up your beautiful flowers so everyone can see? Oh, look at the beautiful bouquet of flowers and beautiful bouquet of people we are. Now I invite you to gently put your flowers down and we will rise in body and or in spirit to join in singing hymn number 131, Love Will Guide Us. The words will appear on the screens. Amen. Love will guide us. You are invited to join in social hour immediately following the service. There will be coffee and refreshments, and I believe there will be cake out in the breezeway. And it's a great time to catch up and to get to know someone new. Remember that now with our change in our COVID prevention policy, if you want to grab your coffee and your food and return inside where it's a little warmer and a little drier, you are welcome to do so. Following the social hour, all of the children are invited to gather on the front deck to learn about our Easter egg hunt. I hope you will join in as it will be a lot of fun. Before that, immediately following today's benediction, we will share in a releasing ceremony. You may know that today is my last Sunday here in the pulpit as your minister. Kitsap Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, you are a caring, fun, loving faith community. I am so very thankful for the opportunity to join you in these past nine months in ministry, in community, and in fellowship. We've had some really great times together rallying for the abolition of nuclear weapons, dressing up for Halloween in some pretty dynamic costumes. I seem to recall, I think it was a blue dragon. There was our snowed out solstice service that we held on Zoom and our beautiful burning bowl ceremony to bring in the new year. Our fabulous team of evening Vespers leaders brought midweek worship to life throughout the winter. We laughed and danced and shook shakers in worship. We gathered around tables and mixed things up with our lively multi-generational services. We explored the magic of our UU values in the proposed Article II revisions, and your magnificent art depicting these values is hanging on the wall out there in the foyer. Along with the work of the committee meetings, and socializing at neighborhood barbecues, you invited me into your lives. We journeyed together, sometimes in joy, sometimes in sadness. Sometimes it was a private conversation in my office or in your home. 
a loving Christmas card or an email to share what was going on in your life. We've prayed together, laughed together, learned together, grown together, and we have loved together. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this time in yourselves with me. I wish you nothing but the best. You have a fantastic mission and committed people to live that mission out. Keep up the good work. Remember that being in faith community is about relationship. And being in relationship is never a solo endeavor. Being in relationship is always a joint venture. And remember, too, you've got this. You've got each other. And love will guide you. Love and blessings to you all. And now we release the flame of our chalice with these words from Reverend Krista Tavies. It is our work shared with each other in covenant that creates and sustains this beloved community. We extinguish this chalice, but its light lives on in the directions we have chosen today. The light of this faith lives on in us together in our hearts, minds, bodies, and spirits. Amen, and blessed be. Brenda Salgada says, the plant people have taught me to be generous and not be shy about blossoming. That is our nature. I think when others see us, it can inspire them to open up and blossom too and we can be a field ablaze with dignity and beauty together. My friends, may your love bloom and may your radiance fill the world with vibrant color. You are a beautiful, beloved bouquet. Go now in peace, make love manifest in all you do, amen and blessed be. Please join in our releasing ceremony. family is constantly changing. People come and go. Babies are born. Children grow up. People commit themselves to one another. Loved ones and friends among us come to the end of their lives. Individuals move into community and fellowship life. Others leave us moving away to new places, new experiences, and new opportunities. It is important and right that we recognize <coughs> these times of passage endings and beginnings. On August 1st, 2022, the Board of Trustees of Kids <coughs> and New Fellowship hired Reverend, Reverend Crystal Zerbos to serve us as our contract minister. I thank the Kitsap Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, its members and friends, for the love, kindness, and support shown to me these last nine months. I ask forgiveness for the mistakes I have made. I am grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. As I leave, I carry with me all that I have learned here.
I forgive you and accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are all part of life's evolution. Do you, the members and friends of the Kitsap UU Fellowship, relief, release Reverend Kristen Zerfoss from the duties of her position as contract minister? We do. Do you offer your encouragement for her future ministry? We <coughs> do. Do you, Reverend Crystal, release this church from turning to you and depending on you? I do. Do you offer your encouragement for the fellowship's continued ministry? I enthusiastically do. We give thanks for the moments we have shared with Reverend Crystal in worship and learning and service. We pray that her journey will be safe and meaningful as she moves to a new and unknown place. So, oh, this wasn't on. Whoo! Wow, that makes quite a difference. All right. Thank you all.